Mr. John Gretry. Good evening. Uh, this month being February, uh, two or three little poems uh, about Valentine's Day and love and things like that. Uh, my Valentine's Day poem. I'm suffering this heart attack. I'm smitten through and through. I don't think I'll recover. And it's all because of you. <laughs> this is a sonnet written by someone who had gone to a party in his youth, probably in his teens, and the girl he'd gone with went off with someone else. It's called Dumped. <laughs> you danced without me. Maybe I was slow to take the hint and get lost. Did you know it hurt? I slid away, slouched by the door, and thought, discarded, like a dress you wore once, no more than that. Those sitting near me talked. Someone joked. I smiled reluctantly, and so was left alone. Then, from the floor, your new love lurched towards me and I saw his hot red cheeks and ruffled hair. I once felt, excuse us, no. I met his eye and would have slowly stared him down. But when you stood beside him, quite unmoved, I then knew we were through. The angry wave inside me crashed and I quickly stood aside. Oh well, better luck next time. And here, meanwhile, is some um, small consolation. I wooed a girl with poetry that I wrote one night in lust. As for the girl, I wooed and lost. But poetry can last a little longer. Right, uh, those are the sort of poems to do with. Um, love and Valentine's. Uh, to finish with, um, I mentioned last month that this year is uh, Paxton 150, Joseph Paxton who designed the Crystal Palace, and we're going to do a short performance of the prologue to my play Joseph and his Amazing Crystal Palace. It involves everybody. Um, you're all, a little, I want you to start off by being little angels singing the Hallelujah Chorus, which if you may, yes, it goes like that. That's it, yes, all to Hallelujah, 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 Oh, for heaven's sake! Oh, by the way, I'm Joseph Paxton, and I've just appeared out of my grave, and this is uh, Sarah Paxton, my <laughs> wife, who, and we've been together now for 150 years, and it don't seem a day yeah. to whatever. Right, well, heaven's sake, can't I get a bit of peace and quiet even here? It's just the angels, dear. You know, they need to practice. Practice from what? They're perfect already. In fact, they're too perfectly perfect, if you ask me. But nobody is asking you, darling. And don't I know it? Just because you're dead, people think you've got nothing more to say. They might be right. They might be right. When were they ever right about anything? But you remember that nice Mr. Cole? He always said you were good at hearing, but hopeless at listening. So? He was right. And so was Mr. Brunel about the water towers. And so was his grace, the Duke. They all thought his young daughter don't go far. Are you trying to flatter me? Of course, my precious. Well, don't stop. Just think, my dear, if you hadn't weeded your way into my life that bright sunny morning, we might never have found ourselves dying to be together <laughs> for all eternity. What? Side by side, their faces blurred, the knight and lady lie in stone, two forever through the ages, back together, bone to bone. Thank you, John! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
thought the game was good. I thought the game was good. <laughs>